guys, today I have a sunscreen empties video. These are all the sunscreens that I finished up in their entirety over the past several months. You guys know it can be a real challenge to find a sunscreen that you like enough to not only wear, but to reapply consistently and to finish the entire tube, bottle, pump, whatever container. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist and I upload skincare and hair care content daily at noon Eastern Standard Time. I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps my videos out a lot. All right, the first sunscreen that I finished up, it makes an appearance from pretty much every sunscreen empties video. I like it that much. It's probably one of my favorite daily sunscreens or you could consider it i guess like a moisturizer with spf and that is the dermatology universal tint spf 46 oil-free broad spectrum protection with anti-aging ingredients anyways this is a combination sunscreen it's got zinc a mineral active ingredient and it has octinoxate a chemical active ingredient Together that provides good broad spectrum coverage against UVA and UVB. It's tinted, which means it has iron oxides that can offer some protection against propigmenting wavelengths of visible light that contribute to hyperpigmentation. And it also has uh, niacinamide in it, which is anti-inflammatory, helps calm down redness and irritation. But seriously, this is one of my favorites. It looks so good on the skin. The tint is not orangey like a lot of tinted sunscreens can be. I've gotten a lot of comments from people with deeper skin tone saying this is their holy grail. So definitely check it out if you are a deeper skin tone and you're looking for a sunscreen that doesn't leave that lavender or ashen look. A lot of people are commenting that this is their holy grail, uh, people with t deeper skin tones. I love it. It really is almost as close to a universal tint as you can get. Now that doesn't mean it's gonna work for everybody, but it works for a lot of people. Definitely worth trying out. Um, it's moisturizing, but it dries down matte. Uh, it doesn't leave the skin greasy. It doesn't, um, it doesn't uh, have a shiny look either. It's pretty moisturizing too. Um, the only thing you need to know about this product is that it has an odd odor. It's free of fragrance um, and it has an odd odor. It smells like a pool float. <laughs> is the best I can describe. The odor does not linger whatsoever, however, and you kind of get used to it and you almost start to enjoy it. <laughs> Anyways, I think there's a tiny bit left, so I'll put it here on my hand so you can see what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seriously, one of my favorites. Ooh, I love that smell. It's like being at the beach. <laughs> All right, now moving on, a sunscreen with zero cast that, I mean, this is obviously one of my favorites. Those of you who have been watching my videos for any number of moments now uh, appreciate. It is the La Roche-Posay Anthelos Melton Sunscreen Milk SPF. 100, yes, that's right, 100. Isn't that kind of overdoing it? Well, truthfully, the studies show that SPF 100 is actually better at protecting people from a sunburn than SPF 50, simply because of the way that people apply sunscreen. It's really difficult to apply enough sunscreen to actually get to the SPF that is stated on the label because you have to apply a lot of it. Uh, so using a higher SPF, at least it gets you to something closer to like an SPF 50. Anyways, I love this. It doesn't leave any cast. It absorbs into the skin very quickly. It's not greasy, it's not shiny. It's great if you have oily skin um, because of that. And it also is water resistant. So it's really wonderful for outdoor activities. It doesn't run in the eyes. I have had zero issues with this product burning or stinging around my eyes. You know, sometimes with chemical sunscreens, I find that they don't burn or sting around my eyes, but as I wear them throughout the day, uh, and they start to, I don't know, rub off or whatever, they end up seeping into my eyes and I get this kind of like blurry eye phenomenon. That does not happen with this. Highly recommend it. They also make it in an SPF 60, um, which is probably a little less expensive. As long as you put it on and put it on consistently, it's a good sunscreen, period. Whether it be the 60 or the, or the 100. I definitely recommend that. Speaking of chemical sunscreens that don't leave a white cast, because uh, as a reminder, if you're, if you're looking for a sunscreen that doesn't leave a white cast, look at the active ingredients. If it says zinc or titanium dioxide, there's a good chance it's gonna leave a cast. If it doesn't say either of those, 
Uh, it's probably a chemical sunscreen, in which case you should have no cast. Um, all right, this product, I'm kind of split. I actually ended up really loving it, but on the face, it does, at the end of the day, start to give burning eyes. This is the Bondi Sands Face SPF 50. This is, like I said, is a chemical sunscreen. It actually is pretty moisturizing without being greasy or heavy. It is water resistant. Because it does kind of seep into the eyes towards the end of the day and make them burny and stingy, I ended up using this as a body sunscreen. Loved it, it's very moisturizing. It's not sticky or greasy. Um, as a side note, they have this one that says face on it and then they have a bigger bottle that doesn't say face. Go with the bigger bottle, identical ingredients, feel the same, look the same. The bigger bottle is probably less expensive. Uh, truthfully, I like this. I would give it, I would give it an eight out of 10. I'll stick with an eight, but it's actually pretty moisturizing. It claims to offer 72 hours of hydration, but I would say I agree with that. It's just pretty moisturizing. There's no oxybenzone in this, which can be pretty irritating. Um, there's no oxybenzone in the La Roche-Posay one either. All right, speaking of La Roche-Posay, this is one I finished up and it is um, their SPF 30. This is a new product from them. It's not inexpensive, but I was pretty impressed with this. This is a mineral sunscreen. It has zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Super moisturizing. It has hyaluronic acid in it, which is a humectant. This is a good sunscreen for people who are looking for a mineral sunscreen and they classify themselves as like combination skin, meaning that you're oily, but your actual skin is dry. You know, oils they, from our skin, they don't really moisturize. So sometimes you can have an impaired moisture barrier leading to dryness, irritation, but you're still making a lot of oil that can leave the skin greasy, but dry. Um, and so you need a good moisturizing product. Sunscreens that dry super matte may not meet your needs. Um, this, I would say you would probably be, you would probably enjoy. It does leave a white cast. It does look kind of shiny on the skin, but that shine, at least for me, ends up dissipating uh, as you know a few minutes go by. And I really like it. Uh, yeah, La Roche-Posay, they nail it with their products. I mean, they have a lot of good ones. I've been really impressed in the past few years with their products. All right, this is the Elta MD Tinted UV Daily Broad Spectrum SPF 40. This is a uh, combination sunscreen. It's got zinc oxide and octane oxide. Similar to the La Roche-Posay one, it has um, hyaluronic acid in it. You know, this product actually has that same pool float smell as the Dermatology one, and it kind of looks similar. Uh, so, I don't know. Dermatology claims that they're, the, the one I showed you earlier is a dupe for the UV Clear, and I always thought that too, but since I've been using the UV Daily, I think it's more, I think it's a lot more like UV Daily than UV Clear, at least the way it looks, feels, and smells. Uh, they're a lot more similar. UV Clear, Elta MD UV Clear is a is more of a matte sunscreen. It is super matte. And I've never really gotten that with the Dermatology Universal Tint. While it's matte, I mean, it's not like greasy or shiny or dewy or anything. It's not as matte as the Elta MD UV Clear. The Elta MD UV Clear is a lot more, it's so matte it's drying. And, and so I, I don't really tolerate it that well all the time. Um, all right. You guys, this is a dupe for the La Roche-Posay shock of fluid. This, you can't buy this in the US, uh, so don't get too excited, those of you who are in the US. This was sent to me by a viewer in Germany. It is the Sensitive Expert UV Schutz Fluid uh, by Garnier. This is a chemical sunscreen. Unlike the chemical sunscreens here, there are more filters available in other countries to give, you know, it allows, honestly, for a more uh, cosmetically pleasing formula, makes the sunscreens less greasy, less likely to be shiny. And, uh, you know, you can really get, it's it just sunscreen manufacturers, they have more options. Their hands are kind of tied here in the States with all the weird rules around, you know, you can't do zinc oxide with avobenzone or whatever based on antiquated stuff. Anyways, I'm rambling on a tangent. This is amazing. If you have oily skin, I highly recommend this. It is great. Thank you so much, the viewer who sent this to me. I really enjoyed it. Now it's not, is it water resistant? It, it doesn't appear to be water resistant. Uh, so I would not recommend this then for uh, being outside, uh, day to pool. I, I encourage you when you're gonna be outside, like at the beach or whatever, 
to stick to water resistant. It just kind of gives a little bit more insurance in between reapplications that it's staying on. But otherwise, that ba that bad boy is great. Highly recommend it. Um, all right, this is a favorite of mine, the uh, MD Solar Science Tinted SPF 30 Mineral Cream. The tint on this product, this is a mineral only sunscreen, by the way, cruelty free and is it vegan? Yes, vegan. The tint on this is a lot deeper than their other sunscreens. It's more friendly for people with deeper skin tones. Now it is a mineral sunscreen, so that does come with a risk of it, you know, leaving a cast. And when it comes to tinted sunscreens and their cast, on deeper skin tones, that's often that lavender look. Uh, so be aware of that. But the tint on this is a lot deeper than many of the other MD Solar Science sunscreens, and it does tend to work better for people with more of a medium to deepish skin tone. So I do recommend it. Do recommend giving it a try. I love this, but a lot of people comment that they don't like the formula because it is. Uh, it's silicone heavy, I would say, or, you know, based in, in silicones, which I think are wonderful ingredients. They reduce shine. They allow for the evaporation of sweat better so you don't get overheated. You know, your face doesn't feel hot wearing them. Uh, but some people just don't like that silicone consistency, in which case you will not like this. Uh, it kind of ha it has a buttery like texture and it has a poor blurring effect. I, I obviously love it. It is uh, water resistant up to 80 minutes, so it's a good one if you're gonna be outside. Uh, and it, it holds up really well here in the humidity. I really like it a lot and definitely recommend it. All right, this is one of my favorites from this year so far. It is the Neutrogena Invisible Daily SPF 60 Plus Sunscreen Serum. This is a chemical sunscreen, no cast whatsoever. It um, is not, some people say it looks greasy. Other people say it made them dry. So I get some mixed reviews on this. I love it. It is very lightweight and I don't even, it doesn't make me look shiny when I wear it. I don't get comments that I look shiny and people you know, tell me when I look shiny. So I don't know, this has worked really well for me. I would definitely, purchase it again. And the only thing I don't like about it is that they do use dyes in it. Some people find that dyes irritate their skin easily. So it would be better if they did not put dyes, but I'm thankful they did not put fragrance. Neutrogena can do a really good job in their sunscreen formulation, but then they go and add fragrance and things that can, you know, make it so that people don't tolerate their sunscreens well. Yeah, you can get this at Target and I, I strongly recommend it. Okay, last but not least is a lip sunscreen from MD Solar Science. I have been really loving these tinted lip SPFs from them. This is a nude shade I finished up. Uh, they look great. As a matter of fact, I have one here in the red shade I'll put on so you can see, because that one's empty. This is what the red looks like. They're really hydrating. They stay in place really well. They will transfer into your face mask. Uh, if you are wearing a face mask, they will transfer the, into that. I mean, it's impossible for, I would imagine, for any lip product to not transfer onto a face mask. So that will happen, but yeah, I've been really happy with those. A lot of lip SPFs are super drying and I can't tolerate them. I have a challenge finding it's challenging to find a lip SPF that is not a really drying. I would definitely recommend that. Do you need a separate lip SPF? Can you just use your regular sunscreen on your lips? You can, but the problem is that the lips are more prone to dryness and irritation. They don't have the oil glands. And so they're more prone to dryness and irritation. And a lot of sunscreens end up drying out your lips. and can cause a lot of irritation I have found, especially for me. I don't tolerate many of them that are in intended for the face or the body. I don't tolerate them on the lips. Uh, I would go, I would put them on the lips if I didn't have any other option, especially if I was outside at the beach. But I always have an SPF lip balm with me wherever I go. Uh, it's really important to reapply it too because unlike, it's important to reapply it too because it's gonna come off more, more readily than, than what's on your skin, just because of talking, eating, drinking. You guys know I'm always sipping on a beverage. But those are your sunscreens that I have really been enjoying lately and finished up, obviously. So comment below what sunscreen have you been loving. 
and would you recommend maybe it's one i haven't tried out and i will try and get my hands on it uh see see how it performs on me <laughs> anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this video if so give it a thumbs up share it with your friends and as always don't forget sunscreen and subscribe i'll talk to you guys tomorrow bye